On this episode of Real Talk, I'm going to share with you the biggest misunderstanding people have about high volume training and why this type of training actually hinders your progress. Now, we all know that beginners are going to see the biggest progress with their training if they're doing a few things right. They're lifting progressively heavier weights, they're consistent with their training, and they're allowing adequate recovery time with proper nutrition. This person could be training two times per week or even five times per week, but because they're beginners doing some sort of systematic routine, they're going to see progress. This episode, though, is more about the intermediate lifter who is no longer seeing gains, they're plateauing, and they're looking for answers. Now, most people are not meticulous with their food. If a person needs 2,300 calories per day and they're not calculating, they might be at 2,400 one day, 2,600 the next day, and the following day, 2,000. Usually what happens is that person gains weight gradually over time, little by little until they decide that they're going to go into something called a cutting phase because they need to look good for the summer, for example. They'll decrease their calories and or do a bunch of cardio. This is the typical cycle of yo-yo dieting, even for bodybuilders. Here's the problem with high volume training. When you increase the amount of time you train, for example, six days a week for an hour, the energy expenditure from those sessions is significant. As long as your diet is in check, the more you train, usually what happens is the better you look because you're getting leaner. When my arm was 18 inches and I had 12% body fat, it has a certain look to it. Now, when my arm was 17 inches and I was 5% body fat, all the definition popped. My arms looked bigger. And when I was pumped, my arms looked really good. Understand my arm is smaller. I'm not as strong. I actually lost a bit of muscle in the process of dieting down. Here's the point. Short-term and mid-term, high volume training may in fact make you look better because you're looking leaner. Look at any bodybuilder at their peak versus off season. They're two completely different people. So Tom, where's the problem? Long-term, this is called bodybuilding. And that's what we're actually talking about, getting stronger, increasing valuable lean muscle mass. This is not body sculpting, where sure, you look better short-term, but in the long game, you're hindering your progress and actually getting smaller. Now, most people don't seem to recognize this. What they do see is a better waist to chest ratio because of the fat loss, which appears as though they're bigger. They see all the definition in their back and they look bigger. So of course, high volume training six days a week got them there, right? Well, yes and no. It got them looking better, which is great, but they actually atrophied and that catches up to you later on. Decreased muscle mass equals lower metabolism, lower metabolism equals potentially greater fat gain later on. Now convince a person who looks his best, even if he's weaker, even if he's smaller, that this type of training doesn't work and he's gonna say otherwise. The one time I went back to high volume training in my 40s, based on horrible advice, by the way, the advice being you aren't overtraining, you're under eating. We've heard that before. I would do 25 sets of shoulders every Friday as part of my routine. 10 sets of 10 on the leg press and who knows how many leg extensions. I was shredded. I looked tight and I was eating 7,000 calories every Saturday, close to 4,000 calories every Wednesday. But... I was hurting everywhere. More importantly, I wasn't making any gains. Let's not kid ourselves here. I looked great, but honestly, the pain in the knees especially debilitated me. I wasn't bodybuilding. I was body maintaining at a cost, and this was not sustainable.